Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here is the game for Done, which features some interesting mechanics and systems. Let's inspect and remake three mechanics from the game. First, the map artillery, then the gas system with the masks, and finally the minimap drawn arrows. I will cover how they work, how I remade them, and how you too can make something like them just in your own games. After watching this video, you can go ahead and download the project files and inspect all the source code for yourself. This video is part of my How It's Made series, where I remake interesting mechanics from various games. Go watch the home playlist link in the description if you want to learn some more about some other systems, like for example the Scout Probe Launcher from Outer Wilds, or the Cleaning Minigame from Rover Mechanic Simulator, or the Soil Moisture System from Enzo and a World Apart. And follow the Curator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. Also, if you haven't already played the game, well then, good news. This one is actually part of the latest Humble Bundle, which is made in partnership with Unity themselves, the bundle includes games, as well as tons of awesome assets for you to make your own FPS games. It's a huge discount, so definitely get it if you have any interest in making FPS games at all. And of course, with this being a humble bundle, it means part of the proceeds go to charity, which is always great. Also, this Friday on the 24th, I will be participating in the official Unity livestream. We're going to play some Verdun, I'm going to talk about a bit about how I remade these mechanics, I will be answering questions in chat, and we will do a bunch of mini-reviews and showcases of the various assets in the bundle. So if you like live streams, then come check it out. Alright, so first just a quick overview of the game. It's a World War I first-person shooter, so just by itself that makes it a pretty unique setting. All of the weapons and maps are very authentic. You've got lots of bolt-action rifles and pistols, some mortar artillery, and tons of mustard gas. It's a pretty unforgiving game, very fast time to kill. Bolt-action rifles kill mainly with just a single body shot. The main game mode is called Frontlines, where you're constantly fighting to capture the next frontline and then defending it from the enemy. It's a pretty fun back and forth on a very unique setting. So if you're a fan of first-person shooters, then this one is certainly worth a try. And like I mentioned, this one is included in the bundle, so even if you pick it up mainly for the assets, definitely give the game a try. Also fun fact, this game was made with Yinti. Okay, so let's inspect and remake three mechanics from the game. Starting off with the map artillery. So in the game, one of the classes is an officer, and the officer has limited weapons, but also has the ability to call in airstrikes and give some orders. The way the airstrike works is you press a button, then you look at a certain point in the map anywhere in front of you, an indicator shows up telling you exactly where the mortars will land, so then you press another button, and sometime after that, the mortars fall down and blow up the whole area. It's a pretty fun mechanic and makes this class pretty interesting. So let's first think about how we can remake this. Well, in reality, this mechanic is actually quite simple. All you really need is just to know where in the world the player is looking at. So based on that, you can already guess that we're going to be using a simple raycast. So over here is my version. I've got my player character, just a standard first-person character controller. And for the map, I'm using a very simple Unity terrain. So now I can look anywhere and press a button. And when I do, the target pointer shows up. It's really nice, really animated, and wherever I look, you can see that it's placed on the exact perfect position, so it perfectly matches the terrain. So I can look around to make sure I have the right target position, then I simply press a button, and now the target goes away, the mortars get fired, and after a while, they simply fall down and explode and blow up the whole area. Alright, awesome! So as you can see, pretty simple and works pretty great. So let's see individually all of the various parts for making this work. Like I said, I have my player character with a very basic first-person controller, this is the kind of thing you can easily build yourself, or maybe you can use Unity Star Assets Controller. Then for the map, like I said, I'm using a simple terrain object. So I just made it, added a bunch of hills, a bunch of nice textures, and there it is. And also, very importantly, the terrain has a terrain collider. That's very important. Then in code, I've got a simple script attached to the player. So here it is. And like I said, essentially, since the mouse is locked at the center of the screen, then all we really need to know is the mouse position in the world, which is the same thing that I covered in the mouse video. So as you can see over here, all I'm doing is a physics raycast. So I'm doing that, it starts from the player camera position. The raycast direction is the exact same one as the player camera forward transform. Then for distance, I just put max value, so it's essentially infinite. And finally, just got a simple layer mask, so it detects only the layer. So that's it, that's how simple the raycast is. Then the raycast info is stored over here on the raycast set. And one of the things that this structure has is the point. So this is the exact point in world space where we hit. So with that, then I just simply have a very basic target visual object. So here it is, it's just a very, very basic mesh. And I also added an animator just to have a nice up and down animation, so pretty simple. Then all I do is just position that object exactly where the raycast hit. 
And for the input logic and the state handling, as you can see, I've got a very basic state machine, so just two states, either normal or the aiming target. So while it's normal, I just listen to a key input. If the player presses that, then we go into the aiming target mode and it shows the target visual. Then while it's in here, it does the raycast, sure. Then it tests for another key input. And if the player hits that, then we do spawn the artillery explosion. And here I just add a simple timer just so that it's not instant. Just like the game, when you press it, it doesn't explode right away. It takes a while for the mortars to actually get fired and land. And for this one, I use the function timer. So this is a class for my utilities, which I actually covered in detail in another video. It is pretty simple and very useful. All it does is really just triggers an action after a certain time. So it's perfect for doing exactly this. How it works is really very simple. It just has a simple follow timer constantly counting down. Once the timer is elapsed, it simply triggers the action. And for the action, this is of type action. This is a type of delegate, which you can go watch this video if you don't know what they are. So by just using that, I can say that I want to spawn the artillery explosion after two seconds. And then for this one, it's also very simple. All it really does is just instantiate a bunch of VFX explosion prefabs, just instantiate them on the artillery position, then just add a bunch of randomness so that it's not always exactly the same. So just spawn it and destroy the explosion. And of course, if you wanted the artillery to deal damage, then this is where you would place that logic. Then the final piece of the puzzle is the screen shake. So for that, I use the Sin Machine Impulse component. Here on the player, I've got a Sin Machine Impulse source. So it's set up with one of the preset signals. So just some 6D shake, very simple. So this is the impulse source. And then on the virtual camera, I've also got an impulse listener. So with that through the code, all I need to do is just go into the impulse source and generate some impulse. So that's all it does to do some very simple screen shake. So when you put it all together, here's the final result. I start off normal, then I press a button, it shows the target. I can aim around and look and say that I want to blow up this area. Then I press the button, the mortars go away, and after a few seconds, boom, they fall down and they explode the whole area. All right, awesome. As you can see, it's all of this. It's pretty simple, some pretty basic logic. It's mainly just a raycast and a bunch of polish, but yep, it looks pretty great. All right, great. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Next up, let's look at the gas system. So with the game being set during World War I, then of course it features some mustard gas. Some officers have the ability to drop mustard bombs instead of mortars. The logic for firing that is pretty much exactly the same. So just point somewhere and press the button, except instead of spawning mortars, it spawns some gas. Then for the gas itself, if I go inside of it, then the screen gets all blurry, everything is messed up, and if I stay inside, then the player takes damage until it eventually dies. So to counter that, every player has a gas mask which you can put on. It slightly limits your vision, but it enables you to stay inside the gas. So if you have the mask on, I can walk around and the screen is not blurry and I'm not taking any damage. Alright, so that's it, another interesting mechanic. Over here is my recreation, I've got my character in my map. And then over there, as you can see, there's a bunch of gas. So if I go inside, there you go, the whole screen is blurry and I'm starting to take some damage. But then I also have the ability to put on a gas mask. And if I do, yep, it covers the screen by quite a bit. So my vision is quite limited. However, as you can see, my health is no longer going down and my screen is no longer blurry. So I can go outside, take off the mask. And as I go inside, put on the mask first, go inside and yep, no damage. All of it looks pretty great. All right, so this is another great mechanic. Let's see how all of this works. Now the core of it is the gas element itself. And for the visual, this one is really just a very basic particle system. So here it is, very, very simple. It just got the shape of a cone, so it's spawning particles all around this area. Then for the emission, just spawning them every once in a while. For the speed, they are simply moving upwards and slowly increasing in size. And then for the color over a lifetime, they simply fade out in the end. And for the renderer, just using some basic particles. So that's a visual, pretty simple. Then for identifying if the player is inside the gas area, for that, the gas has a simple sphere collider. And of course, it's set to trigger, so it doesn't work as a solid object. And over here on the layer, it is placed on the gas layer. Then on the player, I've got a simple script. And on this script, over here on the update, all I'm doing is just a physics overlap sphere. So what this does is it locates all of the colliders within a certain range. So I'm just using the transform position and a small range. So essentially it locates all of the colliders directly on top of the player. And then of course, I'm using a simple layer mask in order to only identify the gas layers. So this finds all of the colliders near the player. And if there's more than one, then the player's inside a gas object. 
So with that, then just a simple logic to test if the mask is on, and if it is not on, then I simply do a basic damage timer. This is just so I don't deal damage on literally every frame, but rather it's time-based. So just a basic timer and just deal some damage to the player. And for dealing damage over here, I am once again reusing the health system, which was made on the very first video on this channel many years ago. It's a very simple but very useful health system. So on this script, all I'm doing is just dealing damage to the player and then simply updating the UI element. So that's how it detects if the player is inside a gas area, just a basic physics query. Then for the visual difference, as you can see like this, the game is looking normal. And if I go inside, yep, it gets all blurry and much more green. So this is the visual difference. In order to apply that, it's really just a volume set to local. So that means that this post-processing profile is only applied if the player, if the camera is inside of this sphere collider. And for the effects, it's all just pretty basic. So just add a channel mixer to increase the green. And then actually Unity doesn't come with a standard blur effect, but it does have depth of field. So I just added this with a distance of zero, so it pretty much blurs the whole thing. Also one very important thing for this to work, like I mentioned, this object is on a separate layer. So if we go into the camera, in order for that to be affected, we need to go into the camera and down here on the environment, we can see the volume mask. So if we want that layer, that post-processing to be applied to this camera, then we need to make sure the gas layer is also selected. So with that, if I'm like this, it looks normal. And if I go inside the collider, yep, it turns into the other effects. All right, so far so good. Then for the final piece of the puzzle, just the gas mask. This one is really very basic. It's literally just a image in the UI. So if I go inside the canvas, inside the gas mask, yep, there it is. It is literally just a texture occupying the whole screen. And to make it a bit more fun, I just had a very basic animation that literally just increase and decrease the scale of the image. So the animator just has a basic is walking parameter. So when the player is walking, this one sets to true. And when it is true, then it triggers the transition, goes into the gas moving animation. And when that one is false, goes back into the gas idle. So very basic. And finally, to polish it all up, I just add a simple fade. So this is just a black image occupying the whole screen. And I just got a simple animation that simply starts with an alpha of one and then goes down. So just like that, just starts black and fades out. So this is very useful for triggering the transition. So it doesn't seem like the mask just appears instantly. Instead, there's a nice fade for it. All right, so here is the final result. I've got my player, I've got my health bar, so I'm on full health and everything looks normal. And as I go inside, yep, I start taking damage and everything is blurry and very green. Now I go outside and now I'm safe. Now I put on the mask, everything looks good and I can safely go inside there. And yep, there you go, all the post-processing is normal. I'm not taking damage and everything looks great. And if I take it off, then yep, there it is. All right, so that's the gas system. It's just a very clever use of colliders and post-processing volumes. Okay, now for the final mechanic, let's look at the minimap drawn arrows. This is a really awesome feature that is perfect for any game where you want to give some orders. So if you have a multiplayer strategy game, or maybe you're making something like door kickers, then this is a great mechanic. So here it is in the game. If you're playing with the officer class, you can bring up the minimap. And then with the mouse, you can click and drag and it draws an arrow. This is for you to give orders to the rest of the squad to tell them exactly where to go. So the interesting part is that it's not a straight arrow. You can really draw the exact path that you want. So I can make the arrow in any shape to tell my teammates where to go and exactly what areas to avoid. So this is a great mechanic for pretty much any team-based game. Here is my version. I've got my character and I'm walking around. I can press a button in order to bring up the minimap. It unlocks the mouse and now I can click and drag in order to draw an arrow in any shape in order to tell my characters exactly where to go. So I click and I can do pretty much any shape that I want and everything draws perfectly. Okay, now for this one, in order to remake it, I actually had to go and rewatch another video of mine since I forgot about how one thing was done. It was a video where I covered how to draw dynamic meshes as a UI element. Specifically, that one was making a stats radar chart. So this is really the perfect moment for me to remind you that I really don't have infinite knowledge stored in my brain at all times. I'm just like you, whenever I don't know or don't remember how to do something, I really just go searching for it. And in this case, I knew I covered this topic previously, so I just searched my own videos and watched it again to remember how it works. For making the visual, I knew I needed a dynamic mesh, so that was pretty easy. I covered dynamic meshes in detail in another video, it's very useful to know how to do that. You just need to assign some vertices manually in order to draw the mesh. Now thankfully, I've got this super useful mesh utils class that I made quite a while ago. It's included in the project files for this video. So in here, I've got all kinds of functions for dealing with meshes. Specifically, I've got a bunch of functions where I can already easily add another point to a previous mesh. 
And the thing that I had to go rewatch that other video to remember is that you can assign a custom mesh to a UI element. All you need to do is use the canvas render component and then call set material and set mesh. That way you can draw dynamic meshes directly as a UI element. So to make this mechanic work, all you really need to know is how to work with dynamic meshes. So I've got some basic logic for testing when the mouse button is down, while it is held down and when it lets go. So when the player presses the mouse button, I simply create a mesh directly on the player's mouse position. So I use the rec transform utility in order to convert the input mouse position. This one is in screen space. And I use this function in order to convert from screen space into the local space of this transform. So do that and we have the anchored position and then just create a mesh. So literally just a point. So create it and set it on the render. And then on every update while the mouse is held down, once again, calculate the mouse local position. Then I just do a very basic distance check so this is just to make sure that it doesn't draw a new part on literally every frame. So it waits until the mouse moves a little bit. Then I just calculate the forward vector. So that's this position minus the last position. So that gives me the vector, which is exactly how the mouse moved since the last point. Then since we have the new point, I really just call the function in order to add it to my previous mesh. So this function just takes the previous mesh. It grabs the last two vertices, so the last left and right, and creates the new ones and simply adds it onto the mesh. So for adding again just some basic mesh generation, you just get the previous vertices, UV triangles, and set them all up. So this looks slightly confusing, but it's really quite simple once you know how to work with dynamic meshes. With that, I can simply click and drag in order to dynamically draw a line. Now the next part is the arrow, and for that I literally just made a simple arrow texture. And then as it's drawing, after drawing the last point, it simply places the arrow rect transform on that position, and simply rotates it based on the forward vector. And this is how you can convert a simple vector direction into Euler angles. And the final thing is simply the mouse. So I just have a script attached to the player and it's listening to some events on the UI. When the player presses a button, it simply toggles the UI. And when the UI is shown, then it sets the cursor unlock state to none. So it unlocks the cursor. And when the UI hides, then it simply once again locks the cursor. And then just enabling and disabling the player character controller so the player doesn't move and doesn't rotate as it moves the mouse. So when you put it all together, here is the final result. So I've got my player character walking around. I can press a button and up comes out the map. And now anywhere I want, I can just click and drag and tell my teammates in order to go through this area in order to attack this area. So I can click, I can drag, I can make any shape that I want. And yep, it looks pretty great, pretty dynamic. All right, awesome. So as you can see, this mechanic is also pretty simple to remake. All you really need to know is how to work with dynamic meshes and that's pretty much it. So if you have a multiplayer game, then this is a great mechanic in order to enable some more tactical gameplay. Or maybe in a single player game, you can use this to let the player draw some notes on their map. Alright, so there you have it. That's how you can recreate three interesting mechanics from Verdun. These are pretty interesting, and as you can see, they are definitely something you can implement in your own games. If you want to try out the game for yourself, check out the bundle. And of course, the bundle also contains tons of tools and assets, perfect for making any FPS game. So if that's a genre you'd like to make, then definitely grab the bundle, it's an excellent discount. Also, like I mentioned, this Friday on the 24th, I won't be participating in the official Unity livestream. We're going to play around with the bundle assets and I won't be there answering any questions in chat. So if you like watching live streams, come ahead and say hi. Check out the full How It's Made playlist, follow the creator page on Steam, and like this video if you'd like to see more of these types of videos. Also, let me know what other games have interesting mechanics that you'd like to know how they work. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.